When I first knew collegiate was a thing, it was just crazy. I was like, wow, they're putting so much money into like having a gamer play, you know? And then when I first got on the stage, you know, saw the people and like all the viewers and stuff, I was like, wow, this is like, this is the real deal, you know? It just feels great that, you know, Winthrop, you know, put so much resources behind us and I hope I can keep winning them trophies for years to come. But ever since coming to Maryville, it's just been such a good situation that honestly I could see myself staying here for four years and just elevating the collegiate level. We just have, we have the best director, uh, full tuition, full rides, and it's just an insane team environment. Coming to Maryville, I wasn't like half the player that I am now. When I first came to Maryville, you know, three, two, two and a half years ago, I still wanted to play professionally, but I realized um, how much I've grown as a person by stepping out of my comfort zone and, and going going to a college program and meeting a lot of new friends um, and just growing a lot individually. Before, I, I was using Collegiate to help push myself forward for pro, but now I'd say that like my mindset has changed. Like Collegiate has helped me become a better person. Like It really taught me some life values that I wouldn't find anywhere else, and I'm really glad that I stuck to it and stayed to the end, yeah. Love, love hearing from the players those kinds of stories. It's not just about the game. That's what we're here to celebrate, but it's about the collegiate experience and everything else that they learn along the way. That's what college is all about, right? Yeah, man. I mean, hey, I just recently graduated. I'm with you. Congrats. Uh, I mean, college, it's a, it's a really great thing, did right? Did you win and a, a championship? Did, did you ever make it to the stage? Ooh, yeah, well, uh, well, I made it here, oh, but yeah. That counts. <laughs> that counts. Yeah, that counts. yeah, yeah, we'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take uh, it. Not quite like Frost Forest, though. Uh, <laughs> with, he's got, you know, he's got that nice ring. Same with... Niles, but yeah, I mean, Collegiate is just such an amazing thing, and it's great to see that some of these players are helping elevate their teammates on that path to pro and having fun while doing it. Exactly. Odd Orange, despite popping off in that last game, has been public saying, look, it was a goal of mine to go pro. Now I want to help the others get their players on the team, like Scary Jerry, like Zyko, that are still looking for that potential future. And uh, Scary Jerry did have a pretty solid performance last game. Zyko especially Let's catch up on the bands because I can already see that you're reacting to them. Yeah, I'm so confused at how Maryville banned out the Vi. The only thing I, th I could think is they were anticipating a Zaya ban on uh, three from Winthrop because be. the Vi did not really work last time around. Or wait a minute, we might have uh, teams at the top swapped actually. It is Mar uh, Winthrop on the blue side, yeah, Maryville on red. From the player cards, we're just yeah. going to go forward assuming that. This okay, is so it is a swapped sides game with the Wukong. Yeah, all right. So Wukong coming through for Frost Forest, that was very effective for Odd Orange last game. And uh, I mean, now in Frost Forest hands, that could be a very, very impactful pick. Now we got your team cards nice and organized and we can move forward, gang. Okay, we gotta talk to Niles. And this is a two games in a row now, hovering the Pantheon into the Kale, into the Zaya lock. Why not the Pantheon lock in? Come on now. Just, we know you play it. Well, I know you're a big Pantheon player too, Kangas. Like, you, you love to throw that one down, so. Maybe, maybe we'll get it if, if, if it's a good angle. You know, he's, again, mm -hmm. letting him know that he could exactly. pick that Played champion. Played it a lot throughout the qualifiers for LCS yeah. Challengers, which, of course, this collegiate program did qualify for. Part of the reason we consider them favorites in the tournament. They've already proven that they can compete with the semi-pro scene let alone their peers in Collegiate. Zaya Rakan yet again for the bot lane to try and pick up that second win. Let's see what Winthrop answer with. I like this Lulu hover a lot, and I hope Winthrop ends up locking this in. Something like an Aphelios Jinx here on three, or a Zeri, yep. is exactly what Winthrop needs to really provide them with a hyper carry threat. Honestly, I thought they performed pretty well in the team fights last game. Mary yes. fumbled the bag a couple times, but they were so far ahead, it didn't end up mattering. Mobility on the Lucian was actually pretty scary. Yeah, he was. He was. Threat, but because you, you listed three options for AD carry, and I've only seen two more bans. So right. Winthrop, instead of going for a bot lane, they go for the Annie, which was banned last time around so they are saving their bot lane pick for the second rotation maryville is that gonna be odd orange with the session because i know niles does play this as well mm. yeah I, I would expect this to be an odd orange champion i, I don't see niles really wanting to go on the tank unless he feels that he has to but definitely could be a flex pick uh it's just another enabler for looking towards those side lanes, right? Uh, if it does end up going to Odd Orange's hands. And Maryville, they're going back to the same strategy that worked last game, even though they don't have the Wukong this time around. It's the same sort of stuff. And uh, look at those bands. They are clearly targeting out Denethor in this one. Yeah, Niles wants a 
solid matchup in the top lane could mean the Olaf yet again taking away the Nar for that ranged advantage and Camille with which Denethor was having a very solid game on last time around you even mentioned it had been known as a one trick back in the past it's definitely expanded the champ pool since but it's not the Olaf ban instead went through go for the Gwen ban so lock it in Niles let's see it the run back likes the Olaf a lot. That's just super interesting from Niles. I mean, I thought it was pretty good last game, but it's such a risky pick and with a much safer bottom side in the Lulu for Winthrop that will afford them more time to potentially look towards that side of the map. So I am interested to see why Niles loves this champion so much. I mean, maybe it's just what he wants to play, but I mean, Winthrop answering with about what we expected. Okay, if that was an Udyr actual locked in, I'd say that's not necessarily what I was expecting. Same hovers from Chookies. Just cycling through, I believe that was Twitch, Rengar. Ooh. All right, Cyan is the final cho choice locked in. So not gonna be carry versus carry this time around. This is a brutal matchup for Cyan. Uh, Denethor going for the self counter pick, saying, hey, play to scale. They understand that they're probably not going to be able to contend with Maryville in their early game. So let's look more towards late. That's exactly what they have with their composition. But get back on the Cassiopeia in another favorable matchup. Niles will be strong as well. If you give Maryville the early game too much, they might just steamroll you. Two melee champions. In the jungle in the top lane that Cassiopeia is going to be very happy knocking into. You can also throw out that Miasma to stop the potential Wukong engages or disengages if you're able to catch them out and get back. Show the proficiency already on the Lissandra. This is a different champion. More carry potential, more hyper scaling. Can you pilot this one as well? And why not? Get back just had an insane game on the Lissandra last time around. May as well give him the keys to that big old carry. And that's the story for Maryville. Once again, carries in every lane. Odd Orange going to try to facilitate that. On the other side, Winthrop, it's a lot of scaling. It's all on mobility shoulders. At the top of the day, we highlighted him as the big damage threat on this team. Well, in this composition, it's all up to him. All up to the Aphelios as we get ready for game number two of Maryville University versus Winthrop. The rivalry continues. Maryville drew first blood in the best of series up one so far. But Winthrop with a composition that's a little more well-rounded, I would say, can scale a little bit better, has engaged tools with disengaged tools. Maybe this balance is what they will need to pick up their first win. But for Maryville, they're coming in with the momentum. Let's see what happens in game number two. And Frost Forest on the Wukong, the captain of Winthrop, the only remaining member from their 2021 victory. Look, the Vi game, it wasn't great. Shake it off. I've got my eyes on this player once again. What can you do to try to get your team some leverage into this game? Last time around, it was Winthrop's sublime play through mid jungle that got them an advantage. I wanna see Winthrop try to prevent that from happening this time around. And we already highlighted the fact that Odd Orange is also the jungler from Maryville University who was at that last time they played each other in the finals 2021. Frost Forest was on the team when they got knocked out last year in quarterfinals. So there's kind of bad blood between both of these junglers. It's like, all right, well, one uh, took down the other in the finals. The other didn't even let them get to top four last year. And now winner has a chance to go for another title. This would be Winthrop's second if they can make the whole run throughout the bracket tying the record for two wins, which is what Maryville has, along with the old British Columbia, if you remember the, the OG days. Yeah. yeah. But of course, Maryville going in for their three titles. And early on, no crazy shenanigans. Just gonna be Niles walking forward to get some vision control. I like this. Just kind of harass a little bit. Yeah, Olaf level one is so strong, you can get a little aggressive and, and there's not really much that they can do. At the end of the day, just a bit of damage, but I think the information is the more important thing. We talked about how important tracking Frost Force was last game. That has not changed in game two. And of course, last game, we also had the carries in the top lane. So incentive to go top, maybe junglers putting some pressure up there this time around, not so much. I'm gonna imagine Denethor will be doing a whole lot of CS in under turret <laughs> uh, this time around, which means both junglers freed up to probably look elsewhere on the rift. Maybe this bot lane, of course, on 13.9. Reminder, we are on that patch. Still AD carry, very important. And mobility and Chucky's already starting to get pushed in by Scary Jerry and Zyko. Level one Zyra Khan, very powerful in the 2v2. So this is potentially three pushing lanes over to the Saints, which is never really what you want to see against this team. 
Feather Recall for even more poke onto Mobility as Trippies and Mobility will need to catch the wave here. Junglers both making it down now. Slight lead for Frost Force on the clear. So if we're looking at full clears for both junglers, Frost Force has a higher chance of making it down to impact that bot lane earlier. Oh, we got the nice three lane view. You can see those three pushing lanes, right? Maryville's gonna be able to crash. They're gonna have full control of the river. I would expect Odd Orange just to look for something like a double scuttle. I don't know if they have prospects of a dive or not. Maybe if they're able to bring Get Back down to bottom lane, they could look to get a little spicy. But yeah. as of now, I mean, they're perfectly content playing towards their mid game, which is the big spike. Hard to do it against a Lulu. If the Rakan jumps in, you get Polymorph, you're gonna be tanking turret, and then you can't jump back to your carry to get out of there. So tougher to actually survive those kinds of dives. And it looks like they probably won't go for the full crash, Ooh, but Niall's doing this a little is mean. bit of proxy farming right now. Yeah, Niall's doing his best Singed impression, but I mean, this is really smart. You know the enemy jungler's not on that side because of the information you got earlier into the game. So you walk up, you can take a base before Frost Force arrives, and it's just super annoying. All right, Zyka does actually get the knock up there onto Trickies. Only takes one turret, shot himself. If you knock up the Lulu, much harder for them to volley more of you. Crap and fight. now we will go for the double scuttle. Odd Orange is here, does not have the smite available, neither does Frost Forest. So it's gonna come down to which mid laner can get there earlier. Conveyan has some CC to play with. Get back, trying to push the way. Niles isn't here yet. And now Frost Forest has the smite off cooldown. So Winthrop can confirm this scuttle. Yeah, Niles not being there first, doesn't have the TP, means that it's not a double scuttle over to Odd Orange. But still, you can see Maryville and Odd Orange very comfortable walking up and at least making Winthrop have uh, prospects of a fight in the back of their mind. Odd Orange was sticking around to think maybe I can try and push him off of this Gromp. Well, I actually still show here through the scuttle vision in the top river. They had that ward down. The building shookies are not going to get help anytime soon. The enemy knows where Frost Forest is. That's a smite steal from Odd Orange onto Frost Forest. Looking for the 1v1. Sejuani versus Wukong. Frost Forest has the Conqueror stacked up. Might just get his first one to Frost Forest. Wow, that was incredibly well played. The timing on the clone able to dash behind. Odd Orange completely <laughs> caught underwear. That's for 2021, baby. Yeah, that's also for last game, baby. The red buff on the Wukong packs quite a punch early on. That was a bold move from Otto Orange. Sticking around after. You're kind of stuck there, though, once you go over that wall for the smite seal. Let's get another look at it. Yeah, it, it's just Frost Force, I thought he was crazy for sticking around, but you know what? Wukong gets so much armor stacking and Sejuani long cooldowns early on in the game, and look at the way he keeps pausing. So it doesn't look unnatural when he actually uses the clone. Otto Orange comes yeah. Yeah. Caught off and there's the pop-off. <laughs> there's the pop-off. You deserve that. What are you doing? <laughs> I also, I, from what I could tell, I didn't see Odd Orange cancel any autos. I didn't see any abilities miss. It looked like Odd Orange got the maximum damage. Just a straight 1v1. Just a stat check right there. So Frost Force feeling really happy about that. Gets a sheen on the first back. And that's so big too, because something I was going to say is Frost Force already struggling to get involved in this early game, getting pushed around by Odd Orange. Yeah. Getting that kill completely changes the tune and could really help out Winthrop, especially once he hits level six. That that's when the playmaking potential comes through. You know what that was? That's that moment where you were so far ahead game one that you, you it's tough to get back into the mentality of like, nope, no, it's, we're even. Right, yeah, it's yeah. It's game two, it's a different game. Yeah, you gotta remember what it's like to not be turbo fed for a sec <laughs> and also playing a tank and not the Wukong. You know, it's, it's a bit of whiplash. But either way, Frost Force happy to catch that one. Now Odd Orange back onto the map though. It's not like that makes the game over. It's just a... Uh, Fun little surprise to start it off here as Niles is right on back to the proxy farming. Yeah, and so despite the first blood, it is Maryville still with the marginal gold advantage. CS in the soul lanes is a thing and okay. maybe kills. Ooh. That's Ragnarok popped. Odd Orange is on the drag and Frost Force is on the top side of the map. Niles can just take the blast plant to safety though, so is fine. Even wards up the scuttle. So Odd Orange knows that you're safe to finish this dragon. And a big takeaway for Maryville, another objective going their way, and that goes to show that even with the kill going over, it is still a Maryville favored early game. But the big thing, right? Ooh. Ooh. Polymorph was already used there. Nah, that's a flash. Scary Jerry. Again, says Boo, get away from me. <laughs> I will kill you if you allow me to do the damage. 
So that's flash down on Trickies. And heal was used earlier. Mobility also used both summoner spells. That probably happened off screen while they were so low underneath the turret. So they're in a very dangerous spot right now. Maryville's just outlaning their opposite numbers. And mobility, though, is walking forward. Okay. Red White. Hey, mobility. Let's see it. I like the positioning. Ooh. Basically just playing chicken with Zyko right there. Saying, all right, I'm going to sidestep your grand entrance. You're not going to knock me up there. And he did. And there's a lot of damage to scary Jerry in the process. And this is exactly what it's going to... Oh, hang on. Slow. Are right, they going for it? And sidesteps again. Mobility's in there. Scary's got the flash, got the cleanse. Roots up mobility. Another shield comes through. Zyko could be in trouble now. Heals are used. Woo! What a 2v2. Mobility and Shrikis are feeling it. That uh, I just aged 200 years, I think, Kangas, off of that play. That was the red-white power spike for mobility. Some mechanics coming through, and it's exactly as I was going to say earlier. Look, Winthrop, they're not really ahead in this early game, but they're not really behind, and their composition is so much better index into scaling. So as long as Frost Force doesn't die, they're in a good spot. I don't have the ultimate, though, and get back is here. If you lock down Frost Force, flash in, Glacial Prison, lock down, get back's here, Niles with the kill credit. And Maryville slay the enemy jungler at the Herald. And that's big. They get the kill. They're going to get the Herald as well. So Maryville can start to snowball this game if they're able to get a good Herald off. Denethor with the wave pushing away as well. You can't step up to this. You are most certainly going to die. No ulti available either, making things very, very scary. So again, Saints one step ahead, but Winthrop, they're keeping things close. I didn't get a chance to see where Convain was while that was going down. I want to see this Andy be a little more active early on. You have level six, you have flash tibbers. Let's see it used somewhere. Try and back up your jungler around these objectives. But so far, pretty slow in the mid lane. But in the uh -oh. game, oh, that's a dead carry. Mobility's down. That's bad news for Winthrop. Scary Jerry ripping the feathers through his opposite number, making it look easy. Now Denethor just going to get chunked down by Niles. There dodges the last undertow again. So Niall's not going to threaten with a dive, but you can only Such dodge so many Rakan knockups. That's a massive wave, and two plates over to MU's bot laner. Scary Jerry is very ahead. Yeah, that, that is not good for Winthrop. Their win condition just getting so far behind off that play, and Scary Jerry coming online is not what you want to see either. This player, so mechanically gifted, so talented, and... Maryville, more than happy to prop him up. It's just Psycho coming out of fog. Mobility without the flash oh. still. Just kick it out. And he jukes right, then tries to go back left to get out. I think if you just keep going right, that's a small window to actually dodge out yet again. But I understand the instinct. Stay by my Lulu. Whew. Rough. We still have some people believing, though. In the bot lane. Was that tweet saying that Winthrop were the favorites? I, I think that was saying kind of Winthrop to let Maryville take game one to keep things close. Yeah, exactly. My thoughts would have been the other way, but I mean, hey, I, I like it. We'll see what happens. It's up to Winthrop to prove it. Here we go. Convain, though, on the map. This is what I want to see. Get out there. Use the flash any stun. Niles is sticking around without Ragnarok. Oh, Convain completes a pack, though. That was an opportunity to go for it. It is a plate, though, to Denethor. But look at bottom. Mobility is now down over a level to Scary Jerry. Harold's going to get summoned up. Your win condition is on the bottom side of the map, and he's completely hung out to dry. Has not had anything playing through him. Does not have a turret to play with now. Is Scary Jerry, with the help of Odd Orange, will claim the first break at 11 minutes, a blistering pace to take a first turret in League of Legends. Yeah, and Scary Jerry now just off to the races in this game. He is over 1,500 gold up on his opposite number right about at that. And that, it, this early on into the game is a huge lead. We'll have to just catch waves in a much safer spot now by the tier two turret, but won't be safe for long. Avelius doesn't really have anywhere to live. He's trying to go mid lane now. I assume he put Convain bot. But look at Odd Orange. They might just go for a gank here on the Convain. Arctic Assault in does not throw out the Glacial Prism. So no gank committed to in the mid lane. But yeah, Mobility Trickies will now try and catch these waves. It's the safest place for them to be on the map right now, which means unfortunately Convain on the Annie, this mid laner that if you shove a wave can roam around, be very impactful, now can only really impact the bottom half of the map. Dragon spawning in about 10 seconds. Get back, not going to give a window over to Maryville. And this is the most critical portion of the game. This is where Maryville is strongest. Engage on the Frost Forest. Cyclone used defensively, and the Glacial Prison misses. 
So Maryville do not find it, but it shows how confident they are right, right now. They're just walking in. They know. They know this is their strongest part of the game. And what I was going to say is this is where they need to prove that they can snowball. They've done it against many, many teams. But if Winthrop can stall this one out, it could get interesting. But they are a long way away from that moment, especially with how far behind mobility is. He is about to cash out on that coal, so that will be at least some injection of gold back into him. But... It's not much. But unlike last time, Winthrop do not have the two dragons early for themselves. Maryville to pick them up. Zyko, though, doesn't have the W available. Frostborn doesn't <laughs> have Cyclone. They actually can't get enough damage or lock him down. So Zyko gets out of there. Cyber Khan, man, is so annoying to play against sometimes. You try to get on the Zyko and he just ease an entire screen away. Yep. But Maryville, they're, they're making great use of this champion pairing both games. It's been such a thorn in the side of the Eagles. Battle Dance, of course, having an increased range on Zaya specifically. Cool little balance between the champions. Shows how strong they are. Let's catch you up on some of the itemization as well to see who really is carrying the gold. I'd love to take it the gold itself, because I'm imagining Get Back gonna be a little ahead. Only has one assist, but up 20 CS over Conveyon. Has the rod stacking already with tier close to the Seraphs already being built and also stacked up. That is a big spike for Cassiopeia. And it's gonna be very hard for Winthrop to actually then take down all the damage threats because you have to worry about an Olaf, a Cassiopeia, and a Zion. Yeah, so Maryville, they've got a gold lead collectively in every position, but Get Back and Scary Jerry, just the two of them, are almost 2,000 gold up on conveying and mobility. Yep. That gold allocation is really good for Maryville, and especially as we approach these team fights, I mean, they're just, they're just straight up stronger. There's not really, really much else to be said there. And I'm imagining the next team fight could be at this Herald if Winthrop wants to contest. They have the Scion who has been locked in lane against the Olaf this whole time. But when the team fights break out, Scion can do a lot of work and buy a lot of space for something like an Aphelios to then have confidence to walk forward, get the damage down. Niles and Zyko on a deep warding mission right there. Niles, I think, was going to try and proxy the wave, but then realized ah, I'm probably not safe enough to do this. So. As the support come bail him out, and we'll just catch the wave up here. Harold should spawn in about 30 Well, here we go. Junglers find each other. Again. Odd Orange in. I think Frost Force is out, though. No, that's a from Odd Orange. They're committing to this one, plus the Miasma. Conveying flashes in. Cyclone. Can they turn it? Oh, He's alive! Juki's keeping Frost Force upright. Conveying will be the Sacrificial Lamb instead. One for one. Mid laner for mid laner. Whoa, but it's an escape artist act from Frost Forest. The wild growth keeping him alive. Going one for one is definitely a win for Winthrop, I'd have to say. It feels good when you're the team that's behind to at least go even in those kinds of situations. Let's get another look at how it started. Yeah, so Otto Orange actually down a level to Frost Forest right here, but get back first to the play as well as Scary Jerry. But watch Chookies as he gets in here. It's first the knockups and the stuns, and then the wild growth at the final moment yep. keeps Frost Force up with the flash. And then he's able to flash up before Zyko gets on him, crucially. Yeah. If Mobility was there just five seconds earlier, I think Aphelios actually runs that fight. Didn't have the best gun setup for it, but not a bad setup. So it's moments like that where Maryville, I think they need to be a little more patient sometimes. If you don't have the vision set up, you don't know where everyone is. It can be tough to commit into the enemy jungle with the engages. And so it is Chookies that picks up the kill for Winthrop, which you might think is not ideal. And you'd be right. Yep. However, getting kills on supports early when they're enchanters can actually be very, very good. Early Moonstone slash Shirelias can really be a game changer. So I don't yeah. hate the gold allocation for Winthrop. And again, going one for one when you're down against a mid game comp is big. We got a setup right here. The engage tools. Looking for any members of Winthrop that are out of position. Zyko decides to walk in with Isn't Orange. They just go right on across Forest. The Wild Growth used yet again. So that is the Lulu ultimate for not much traded on Maryville's side. They feel good about that one. Yeah, Frost Force didn't quite have the Cyclone available, so not really any self build to be had. I don't think Winthrop really wanted to fight this one anyway. They might have just been testing the waters. So getting away with only an old burned at the end of the day is completely fine. You got Dragon spawning in a minute. Maryville already has two. It is a Cloud Soul, which is pretty strong, but definitely not the strongest. So they might just be able to afford to give over these neutrals, to be honest, and wait for item spikes on their carries. We'll say it's kind of insane having a Rakan and an Olaf on your team with the Cloud ult, but either way. Winthrop 
could look to stop the stacking here. 30 seconds until it spawns. And we have resets coming in from Maryville. So they're going to be a little slower to the map. Winthrop didn't have vision, though, so they don't know that. Yeah, and Winthrop without flashes available on critical members uh, being Frost Forest, they can't really start the dragon and expect to live, right? You want to funnel yourself into a pit against a Rakan and a Cassiopeia? Yep. No, thank you. Uh, does not sound like my ideal Saturday afternoon, Kangas. <laughs> and uh, Convey doesn't have flash either, so the Annie will have to look for a flank engage or maybe a peel engage onto the likes of Odd Orange Zyko if they jump in. But Harold oh, will it. mid lane. Maribel will use the Herald to uh, reinforce their approach. Odd Orange can be the snap engage. Zyko can be the snap engage. Winthrop need to be watching both of those. Well, the Herald doesn't take the tower, but Maryville really just using that to try to get some mid priority. They're hovering down towards the bottom side of the map, but they're not willing to commit. Denethor is here and very tanky, in fact, getting mid priority. I see Scary Jerry's just tickling him with those auto attacks right now. Not doing too much. You're more worried about the Cassiopeia. Yeah, get back. Get back is pretty strong. Here. Get back is just 1v5. Holding Telling him to get back. Point. Say, yeah, living up to the namesake right now. Winthrop cannot approach through the snake. They could try to cross back towards this top tower. Pings are going down onto it. They've managed to crash this mid wave. So I think at the end of the day, it should be a tower trade for a dragon. Uh, but no, resets coming through from Winthrop not willing to commit. And so Maryville just taking another neutral. This is one of those things that Maryville is specialized at controlling objectives forcing their opponents into incredibly uncomfortable situations. They have control wards in the river, so you cannot just walk up, even though you only see the Cassiopeia. Yeah, you don't know that there's only the Cassiopeia there. You have to kind of assume everyone is there, because if not, you can ju get jumped on and die. Maryville specialize at these kinds of situations, forcing errors from their opponents around these big objectives. That's now three dragons in a row. They're on soul point. And Cloud Soul, when behind, can actually be very punishing because the extra chase down potential and rotation ability that it provides yep. is very strong. So, Maryville, they're going to be happy to get that one. I do want to point out, Mobility, despite getting set behind early, is actually the second richest person in the entire game. Ooh. He's behind Scary Jerry by over a thousand, so it's still not great, <laughs> but sure, he's sure. the next most. Winthrop's really been funneling him a lot of farm over these last few minutes. Oh, so, okay, wait, wait uh, get, get he back was. Out wave. Get back out one yeah, more Yeah, 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 one more wave, he, he'll be back at it. Um, but that does mean that Winthrop is still trying to play towards their win condition. Oh, speaking of, he just gets snap engaged on. Oh. Chain CC, where's mobility? Where'd he go? I can't see him, I can't find him. Even a wild growth wasn't enough to keep him up. And now Frost Force chased down by Niall. That's gonna be two picked up for Maryville. Maryville might even be able to start the Baron here. They've still got health bars, maybe just looking towards this mid tower, but that's the two biggest threats on Winthrop gone. Conveying, doesn't have the ultimate. Denethor will come in. They're gonna try to face check. Okay, let's see if they can do it. They gotta burst down Scary Jerry. Does have the ultimate, forced out now. Can Convey get in there, throws out the stun, doesn't Five have time. anymore. Has Tippers just walking in. Oh, Denethor! Scary Jerry's in trouble! Scary Jerry's down! Convey with the Tippers! The MVP of the game! It's finally taken down, but Kambayne's still up. MU forced off the Baron. And this is just a little taste of what we were talking about, Kangas. Maryville, they're out rotating Winthrop, so they're able to get the pick on mobility. But Winthrop is out team fighting Maryville. It's Denethor playing a beautiful fight. Red White. With the flash and the blast cone. Red White on the Baron. Maryville, they're forced to respond without their strongest member. Hot Orange could look for the steal. I don't think you get anything more. Get Back is here with Flash. Maybe two item Cassiopeia can do something, but Winthrop are committed to it. I don't think they can do this. That goes in, Niles is in. They're Maribel low. They're assembling, everyone's together. Get Back's walking up, pushing mobility off of it. Hot Orange is in the pit. It's gonna be a 50-50. Frost Force secures it. Gets out. still alive, mobility gets out of there. They will claim Denethor. Mary will get one, but they lose the Baron. How did Winthrop get away with that? That is insane. Razor's Edge gameplay right there. They dropped Denethor, but I thought they could all die and lose the Baron. Winthrop, they closed the gold gap substantially. Let's look at this again. The health bars on Denethor and Chookies are so low, and we already talked about funneling into the pit against this Maryville comp. Niles just giga chats it yeah. in the pit, but Frost Forest, cool as a cucumber in game two, across the board, hits the smite. The battle of the junglers, the rivalry of the schools, and Frost Force comes out of this play ahead. 
secures the 50-50 and gives the team a much needed buff. The gold was getting a little out of hand, but they can get a lot done now. And Kangas, about eight minutes ago, I said this is critical point of the game. Can Maryville snowball? The answer's been no. Yeah. They've got the dragons, but gold is still only 3,000 in the lead. Winthrop, they're coming alive in this game. Maryville needs to find a big advantage soon. Soul is coming up soon, though. Yeah, they have the Baron through the dragon spawn. So Winthrop can use this Baron to control the wave stage, control the approach to the dragon, and deny Soul from Maryville. Winthrop needs to be so careful, though. Maryville's rotating. Chucky's is sticking with Frost Forest. Takes a blast cone early, I like that. Frost Forest can get out himself. And they have the Baron Wave pushing into the bot. Frost Forest now just runs away. Scary Jerry's alone. Conveying has the Timbers, and they're going in for the engage. That's Zaya ult down. Yeah, they're just blowing the cooldown. Sure, you trade Sion ult, but Scary Jerry's is, in my opinion, the most important one in the entire game at this point. He's still the strongest member on Maryville, and now that gets the mid priority as well. Winthrop. Playing this out very nicely. This game too, getting a little spicy. I like the Denethor, didn't even use the Demolish there in case they want to go for another push onto the turret. But Dragon's up in 15. Now just catch the wave, shove that in, go to the Dragon. That's just gonna be the fight. This is the game right here if the teams opted to the 5v5. Mobility and Scary Jerry, all summoners available. We already mentioned the importance of Scary Jerry's ultimate. We're not getting it. We're not, okay, Maryville's gonna give. Off. I, this is smart. Without Scary Jerry's ult, you are down a big tool to keep your damage alive and you can still just allow get back to scale a little bit longer. You're probably gonna have your third item by the time the next fight starts. Maryville, they're trying to trade a top tower, but this is still a big win for the Eagles. Two item Olaf, Cassiopeia, and Zaya, and Maryville afraid to fight. I mean, that tells yeah. a story in and of itself. Mobility should have two items on this base, one would think, and the tower's not even gonna fall. It's a win for Niles the Eagles. can't quite clear out the full turret. As Denethor will be there to catch the wave. As I said, no, Niles is committing. Never He's mind. Trying. So he will claim the turret. Shame on me for assuming. Whoa, Denethor's strong, though. Does a lot of damage. Yeah, that's Scion base stats right there, baby. Yeah. So very tanky. So not easy for Niles to trade on back. And Mobility does get a full turret bot lane back. And there we go. Infinity Edge plus the Gale Force has kept the cold this whole time just for the passive gold income. Working out for him. So you mentioned Scion stats. Denethor is stacking full armor in this game. He's got a Sunfire, this plated steel caps, as well as the Bramble Vest. That does mean get back will shred through yeah. this Scion if given the opportunity. But if not, Denethor's tanky to everybody else. It's high risk, high reward. And important to note, even as get back has three items, and Zyko almost gets engaged on right there. I think that get back is the clear target for conveying. It's no longer Scary Jerry, who has the cleanse, has the ult. Now the engage from Odd Orange. Maryville are posturing. Looking for that fight. They don't find it though. Teams are gonna split the map. It's get back pushing in bot with the rest of Maryville in mid and mobility moving up to the top side. Maryville, they've called the bluff though. They're pushing on two lanes. Yeah, it's advantageous for them. Backs are coming through. More value for Maryville here if they get the bottom turn as well. We have the teleport coming in. TP. Okay, so we back. Get back will not commit to that one. And mobility will grab another wave of uh -oh. you teleport on yourself. Mobility's all low. No, no, what happened to Winthrop? The setup was so clean, and now Mobility, their carry. The damage of the team is surrounded by Maryville. Can he take one with them? That's no the way. best you could ask for. Oh, the Sharks are swimming around, and they'll gobble up the carry. So it, it is Mobility going down, but no neutrals on the board. It's really just to pick. Nicely done by Maryville to find that advantage, but Winthrop still in the game. The gold is still stagnant, 2.3, 2.1 in favor of Maryville. Things just still sitting on a razor's edge. I said that the soul fight could be the game. I'm still expecting that. We do have Baron coming up in a minute, but I think Maryville might be fine to wait out the extra time for the soul. Well, I mean, look at their composition though. On the other hand, they have the Zaya, they have the Cassiopeia. These champs can shred a Baron in like 15 seconds. That is true. Seconds. That is very <laughs> so true. So Winthrop have short windows to check the Baron pit and make sure it's not just dead. And we already have Maryville vision control around the area. Look at what they do on the map. Even when they were pushing mid and bot to take those turrets, they somehow manage to maintain their vision priority in the top jungle. And that means it's gonna be hard for Winthrop to walk in. And for as much as Winthrop has fought back in this game, mobility, we highlighted him as the big carry. He's the one that said they were gonna take down Maryville in a sweep. 3-0. 0-3-0 in this game has been shut out completely 
by the Saints needs to find a way in. But on the other side, get back at Scary Jerry. Three items apiece. Not great guns for Aphelios either. If Maryville identify this, they can just start up the bear and force Winthrop into you. Here we go, Denethor. Denethor's walking up. Frost Force with the engage initially. Scary Jerry, good positioning so far. Maryville are just waiting for Kevin. Big engage from Convey. Zyke goes down, but look at Niles. Look at Scary Jerry and get back. Denethor is just getting shredded up. The carries from Maryville are untouched. And even if you flash Denethor, you're right back into Niles' arms. Can survive with the wild growth. Odd orange on a flank right now. Mobility. Oh, the Niles! But Niles just jumps right in onto him. Shut down. Mobility still up there. Have the front line to work with. You gotta keep a Falios up. Get back, claims one, but now you're all alone. The slow is coming through and a flash away to safety. What a crazy fight to only end a two for one. There's no way. They're starting. Get back can still Baron, win. they're so low. Get back's gonna kill them all. Get back can still do a lot of damage right now. That's a big shield onto Denethor. Odd Orange is there to try and front line. Get back will claim one. Watch the cast. Red white, yeah. red white. Odd Orange, now you got the guns on the Aphelios. Now mobility is unleashed. As get back will claim one. 1v3, what can the snake do? You have the Rylize, you got the slows. Oh, That's this is cool so down. hard for Winthrop to approach. Look at Psycho. Psycho might be able to get here in time if he can walk up the river, but Frost Force is on the brow. He's going in. Cyclone's coming up. Cooldown. Oh! oh! Dodges the petrifying gaze, but they do not continue the chase. But it, it's a Pyrrhic victory at the end of it all. Four for two in favor of Winthrop, but they're all too low. They've got to take their base. And that Soul Dragon we talked about spawning in 10 seconds. Let's look at this fight again. Winthrop, they rock up to the club. And the bouncer for Maryville wasn't actually quite there. Niles was trying to run a train on the bottom side, but it's conveying that really tips the scales. From this point, it breaks down all across the board. Nobody really knows what's happening. But <laughs> Winthrop, they win the fight. Let's get in live. And th this is what happens. The repercussions yeah. of the play. Winthrop were not on the map fast enough. Maryville ran right there. You saw before the replay, and that is soul secured. We're back to the Baron Dance. But mobility, three items, and still has a bit of red white. Conveying didn't have to stun. Ooh. Doesn't have flash either. Timbers is down. Dodges out on odd orange is engaged. The slow is there though. Everybody's out of conveying. Denethor! But the range is! Denethor with front force! Wabo Gabo! But it's not enough for Scary Jerry! Untouched the 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 mobility trying to get the damage in. Scary Jerry disengaging, running back with the team. It's a battle of the carries. Aphelios versus Zaya. With Maryville's running down mid. Winthrop, they've got to get out. It's Maryville with the inside track. Denethor's gonna try to walk in, but remember, he'll get shredded at just half HP. Scary Jerry still has ult. This Zaya is in a very comfortable position right now, even if you're less health than mobility, who's got the Lulu behind him. But Maryville do not push for more onto the inhibitor turret. They will just back off. This game is tense, oh. Kangas. Game number one, solidly in favor of Maryville. But Winthrop, they pick more scaling. They're performing in the team fights. And remember mobility at 0-3-0? Zero, zero? Yeah, try 3-3-1. Three, three, and one. He is doing a damage in these fights. But as we look at this one again, it's really Denethor that is the X factor here. This Scion ulti touching Niles oh. just barely. Niles is Ragnaroking. If he blocks that, he saves his whole team, but instead it gets through. It's a trade of one for one, though. And, and no, we're, no, we're, Baron. Baron. we're on Baron. Okay. We gotta go in again. Track the ults. Conveyan has the Tibbers, but I think Baron's just secured. It's down. Zyko with the flank. Fine time for everybody. Scary Jerry still had that ultimate available and is untouched yet again. And I think Mary will get out clean. That's a Baron secure. You know what you said about burning down the Baron? That's it right there. Maryville, they just show up. They know exactly how long it'll take. Great disengage. When you That's get, a big advantage. When you get to this item spike on these champions, you have to get onto that Baron so fast. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, it is just gone. And Kipek even gets a Gargoyle Stone Plate just to stay alive longer in these fights. Realizes with Stone Plate, with Conqueror, I have the damage I need. Now it's about pumping it out. And we're really just starting to see a story unfold before our eyes in the series. It's Maryville with the cleaner team play and map rotations, but Winthrop, if they're able to find that even footing fight, they are performing. Yeah. It is a battle of macro against micro. Maryville, they're barely edging out the competition so far, but barely is the key word. They've got the Baron, but only a 2,000 gold lead. What can they do with Baron before mobility gets flash off cooldown? Maybe just Captain oh, Vayne. Pick. That's a big pick. I mean, Winthrop, they can't defend without their mid laner, with how clutch 
conveying has been in a lot of these fights. Now they're forced to play Wave Fear Duty. If you can give up one hit, it inhibits okay, but 45 second cooldown or er, death timer for conveying. Moments like this, I want to see the engage. Go for the 5v4. You can try and find it while Mobility still does not have the flash if they've been tracking that. Mobility does have the Infernum that will help out a lot with Wave Clear Duty, but Maryville, they're bearing down. They want to end the game with this Baron. They know this is their chance. Hot Orange has the Warmog, so you can always just walk back and heal back up. That's a lot of damage from Mobility. One auto. As the Redemption comes down to keep everybody topped off. 15 seconds I can vein. I think the window's gone. Maryville is oh, for it, though. Ghost used by Niles. Nice. From Frost Force, stopping the engage. Zyko does land the charm. Frost Force is going to go down, but the engage oh, ability is over yet again. Watch for Get Back, watch for Scary Jerry. The carries are still carrying the fight, and Winthrop could pose no threat to them. Oh, but but they still trade one for one. They hold onto the inhibitor. Maryville, I don't think they found their game-winning advantage. Sure, the Red Bull power, Baron power play at 3,000, but the game at this point isn't as much about gold. It's about execution. Winthrop is making it happen. <laughs> you see Get Back. Laughing a little bit in his chair, reacting with the team here. Let's get another look at the engage. It's exactly what we said. Maryville wants to try to end the game, or at least get the back-breaking fight. But even though Frost Force gets oh. one shot, Infernum and Scion ulti oh. across everybody just cleans it up and means that Maryville has to retreat. Unfortunately, Mobility couldn't get close enough to get more autos off in that you one-shot Scary Jerry if you're able to. Three item close to four items on the Aphelios. Mobility is at that stage of the game where you can just carry if you can auto attack. But MU so far have been doing a good job of preventing that from happening. No Baron buff for the push though. They're gonna have to try and get this next turret without it. And Kangas, I think this is the battle that we expected oh, yeah. between these two teams. When we said it might be closer than people think, this is what we had in mind. Maryville, one step ahead, but Winthrop right on their coattails. Forget about game one. This is what series are made of. We're going for the engage. Body blocks. Death War can't get in onto Scary Jerry or get back. He's getting shredded a little bit. Frost Force teases the flank and Niles spots him out. Good from the Olaf. Elder in 40 seconds, however, in Maryville. They've been pushing these waves up so far. It's going to be another situation where Winthrop is forced to face check. Oh, Frost Force getting real big when the command goes in. Ring game. Zyde goes down. They just did it. Frost Force on to Scary Jerry. Has the ultimate, has the flash. Scary Jerry is empowered. Guardian Angel pop. Mobility, got mobility. On. mobility has to flash away. Can't get the autos out in the fight. Jerry. Yet again, it's Scary Jerry. With a sliver of a health bar, he makes it out. Mobility still full HP. Denethor and Conveying both having the teleport to get back to this fight. Scary Jerry has to base as the Elder spawns. Okay, can Winthrop do this on the map? Denethor's backing, teleporting back into the fight. It's gonna take Scary Jerry a little bit of time to make it here, and he will not have ult or flash for this. That means get back needs to be the carry. Here we go, Niles rolling up to the club. Scary Jerry's back. 4v4. Elder Dragon fight. Denethor has the ultimate available again. Cyan engage is a real angle. Bad back guns. The damage in. Yeah, mobility would have preferred different ones right now, but they are chunking down Niles. They're chunking down Odd Orange. So far, only Denethor has absorbed damage. Oh, that recall and the mobility was big there. Just gets chunked to half health. Makes his job harder. Psycho, Psycho, with the flank. Psycho. Niles is going in Kavane. Psycho gets on to the carry. Mobility's gonna go down. Odd Orange is there. Niles is there. They got the carry. And Maryville University, when the pressure mounts, they rise to the occasion. They'll take the fight and the elder. This is what a championship team is made of when the chips are down. It's Maryville that stands tall. As Gary will get picked up here, but the team can surely walk in and close out regardless. Not much these inhibitors can do to stop the push. Maryville withstands the pressure. 36 minutes is the time it took. But now Frost Forest, I don't think it's enough. They've got the minion wave. The wave Maryville up 2-0. Go get back's got the damage. Frost Forest will give them one more kill for good measure. Maryville go up 2-0 in the series. And what a game it was. Winthrop, they put on a show in this game for sure, but it's still Maryville with the win. The result is the same. They're up 2-0, they're on the verge of a sweep, and Winthrop is back to the drawing board once again. Yeah, you see the man on your screen. 
A little dicey early when he went for the invade and died to the war. <laughs> That felt like a century yeah. ago. Fantastic work from Odd Orange, stabilizing the game after that moment, not letting it snowball out of control when the Wukong with that early kill could have gotten even further ahead. Odd Orange is feeling it right now. And that's still the thing, right? Is that Maryville is still winning out in these earlier stages of the game. They're yeah. still the ones playing on the front foot, but it was Winthrop that was able to get it to this point. Let's take another look at this fight, because watch mobility, he got chunked down and everybody jumps on the carry. Yeah, it's just Psycho on an insane flank and Odd Orange hitting the smite. I think we've said these players' names a million times this series, but it's with such good reason they are smurfing it for the Saints. Niles pushes everyone back, and then when the window opens up, says, let's get the 80 carry. Also, unfortunately, Conveyn caught out a little bit there, was looking for the engage onto the carries. But when the Elder goes down, it was secured by Maryville. Even Odd Orange can probably 1v1 yeah. mobility at that point. Yeah. Really rough fight, but honestly, just impressive stuff for Maryville overall. They controlled the vast majority of that game. They did. I mean, Winthrop, they're performing so well in these fights, but they just got to find a way to get themselves there. Maryville, they are performing at the top of their game. I don't think they're as overrated as maybe Mobility said they would be, my friend. Up to zero, looking at the sweep, but a reminder for everybody watching at home, come by the arena all this week. If you want to join this crowd, who have been amazing, by the way, and support the best programs in the nation, remember the tickets are free. And doors open at 11 a.m., so get those butts in some seats. But for now, let's head on over to the campus quad so our analysts can finally touch some grass. Thank you very much, Kangas. Welcome back to the broadcast here, y'all. Uh, again, game two in the books. Uh, huge, huge win here for Maryville. Yet again, not as direct as we had thought, but they, a win's a win here. You know, you're going to take it. it. I feel like, honestly, the early games have gone really well for Maryville in both, ga in, in both game one and game two. I really like the fight that Winthrop put up towards the end. Specifically, I think Denethor on that Scion had a really, really good game. Um, some of those, some of those unstoppable onslaughts looked really good. I just love the post game between Odd Orange and Niles. Like they've been playing together for so long, and it almost looked like Niles was like kind of bummed, and Odd Orange is like, eh, you know, like it's it's a win, right? Because none of the fights went their way. But I think that how Maryville was able to play the map that game was the big difference maker for why they were able to obtain that soul. They got a free Baron, they had a better setup for Elder too, and that really helped them overcome winning fights that were in favor of Winthrop. Yeah, well, let's take a look at some of those fights where Winthrop were showing off the hands and taking some leads here. At 15 minutes, it looked like trouble here uh, for Frost Forest, but he was able to sneak away on the Wukong. Frost Forest had a couple of, like, magical escapes. There was the first blood um, against Odd Orange in the enemy jungle, and then this play here. I mean, shout out Chookies as well on the Lulu, doing a really good job peeling there, the wild growth at the last second. It seemed like that could have been an opportunity for Maryville to really run away with that game. Uh, and on multiple occasions, Frost Forest kind of put a stem in that. Yeah, uh, and it, it felt like, as you touched upon earlier, Cubby, it, Winthrop would win these fights or get advantages in the fights, but then not optimally set up on the map compared to Maryville, who was constantly getting pressure in mid and then forcing Winthrop to respond. It, it was kind of for me as a fan, frustrating to see because you're like, Winthrop, you're making all these great plays. You're hanging in there. You're you're fighting the guys. You're, you're backing up your smack talk, but now you look kind of lost and kind of hesitating. I, this is part of the fun of collegiate bed. I, I think <laughs> we can kind of talk about that too with the next replay coming up because what ended up happening is Winthrop, they got an edge. They, they started the win. They're like, okay, you know what? We can flip the Baron. And somehow they actually managed to walk out with a Baron flip, but what ended up happening with Winthrop is... Sometimes, like, they would win the fight, but not quite recover. This play was crazy, and for me, the big standout so far in this series has actually been Denethor on the side of Winthrop. The fact that he Scion ulted behind to get Zaya's ult, and then found it with a combo of Tibbers and a nice Q over the wall, really creative, and that actually led to a Baron flip where they get the Baron, they magically walk out, and I think this game got down to about a 1k gold lead for Mary, but Winthrop was actually able to close the gap off this play. A couple of really... You know, good plays from conveying as well on the Annie, knowing that he fell behind in lane, and that was a big reason for Maryville taking early control, but sacrificing his body a little bit, getting some big Tibber yeah. stuns, that kill on the Jerry really setting things up. And like this Baron for us, it was like, all right, uh, Winthrop got something, you know, there's some momentum. Like they're actually, this is the first time in the two games where it actually felt like Winthrop, hey, they are in this game. Like they have an advantage, but 
The second Baron, you know, the first one was sloppy, but they got away with it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The yeah. second one uh, it gave a little bit of ring around the rosy of like trying to hunt down the snake in the grass, and they just could not find get back in the back half. Yeah, uh, let's take a look at that one again. You, you you saw that the the Baron was just the the main focus, but then Cassiopeia man, and we've been talking about it a lot with get back just buying so much time as we see how the fight unfolds here. Constant back and forth and mobility figured out. Oh snap! I have Gale Force. I can use it forward. We've been waiting for him to pop off the space there. Made for him he picks up an early kill and then they start to clean up the rest of this fight but again as cubby is saying the back half of this is what started separating maryville's class I mean, you can see that like health bars are low on the side of winthrop but they were actually able to band together uh and at least find scary jerry in the back half but then it's like we can't start the baron as long as cassio is alive but then they got stuck and they ended up chasing that cassio until she was able to escape topside and guess what? There were 15 seconds left until that Cloud Dragon spawned. Winthrop, were all four of them were stuck in the top side of the map. And that just enabled Maryville, even after they just died, after they just lost in that play, they respawned and got that soul for free, which when you have champions like Olaf and Rakan, that's a game changer. And I want to shout out Get Back as well. Not only just off of that play, but really controlling the map, that entire series, th that entire game. I mean, somebody that came over from the OPL, played professionally in Oceania yeah. before making his way into Collegiate, still... Find, trying to find that avenue into the pro space and really making a case for himself over I, these last couple of months. He, like, even the first Rift Herald, which if you have Annie Wukong, I mean, you're going to expect to secure that. Get back actually forced Conveying to recall early. So Frost Forest got caught as Conveying was on a reset, and, like, even opened up that play. So a lot of the early leads from Maryville, like, it was just straight up outplays in lane. And, I mean, a lot of props to Winthrop to actually fight back in this. But again, it's the early game fundamentals combined with the late game map play that really makes us feel like Maryville has a big edge in this series. And I do want to give some shout out again to, to Mobility as Digon, you were, you were saying, kind of finding that edge a little bit towards the end of that game. And I, I noticed that out of a lot of the younger players um, throughout the end of that second game. The, the early game still not necessarily going their way, but they found a couple of angles there and maybe you know, they're down 0-2. They find if they find their footing in the early game, in the laning phase, yeah. they could have a shot to, to keep this series interesting. I, I know that mobility stepped up in the back half, but still, they've given away Zyra Rakan yep. first two games. There have been two different answers from Winthrop. Neither of them, I've I, I like the Aphelios Lulu a little bit more for them, but I still feel like at this point, I do not want to get 3 0'd by giving them that same bot lane all three games. I think at this point you have to deny it. They're on blue side again for the next game. So we'll see if that's either going to be a die in the bands or if they play themselves. We expect all the teams here to be able to play Zyra Rakan. Yep. 3 0. Yes. I, well, you're gonna just change your prediction like that. Yeah. All right. Well, oh yeah. I'm gonna hold strong. I, I have some faith. In, I have some faith in the Winthrop boys. Yeah. Again, Winthrop have found ways in fights to make up for some of these macro decision losses and uh, make it really close. Well, game number three is coming up after this short break. See you there. We'll see you in a little bit. Vermont Orange on the Frost Forest, looking for the one v one. Sejuani versus Wukong. Frost Forest has the Conqueror stacked up. Mike is getting his first one to Frost Forest. Whoa! What are you doing? That's screaming. Scary Jerry, good positioning so far. Maribel just waiting for Convey. Big engage from Convey. Zyke goes down, but look at Niles. Look at Scary Jerry and get back. Denethor is just getting shredded up. Zyke, 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 Zyke